What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. How is everybody doing today? Hope you're doing well. Guess what? It's uh, the same week as the ice apocalypse here in Texas and I'm out riding. It's about 65 degrees. On Tuesday it was like negative 10 with wind chill and we had between uh, in North Texas between like six and eight inches of snow and it was absolutely insane. But here we are, <laughs> the same week pretty much, and we're out riding at 65 degrees. So, um, you know, a lot happened uh, last week, and my heart goes out to those folks that had uh, power loss and pipes breaking, and it wasn't easy. I mean, you know, we're talking single digits. People were without power, um, and so they were doing some wild stuff to stay warm and, you know, building forts and living rooms to, unfortunately, people bringing grills inside of the house and, uh, unfortunately, passing away. Uh, not funny. They, they were just trying to stay warm, you know, and uh, people sleeping in their cars. Um, just horrible, horrible stuff. You northerners up there probably looking at us like, what is wrong with you idiots? But... <laughs> We're the South, man. We're not used to that sort of stuff, and we are not prepared in any way, shape, or form for that. And um, I'm going to put some news clips in Based right on here. That disaster there in Texas, more than 150,000 still do not have power. The good news is that is down from the peak of over 4 million, but right now a water shortage is forcing more than 13 million people to have to boil their water before they can use it. We are now learning it was almost much worse. ERCOT, the agency responsible for managing 90% of the state's electricity, revealing that the Texas grid was minutes away from catastrophic failure on Sunday. It just sounded, you know, like a waterfall hitting. In Dallas, this man's apartment destroyed when pipes burst in the building. It just kept getting worse. The wall was just splitting up in two. And as you can see, I mean, it was wild stuff. I mean, over three million homes without power, um, in my neighborhood, personally, I was without water for about two days. Now we didn't have water pressure for another two days. Um, and then we were under a boil restriction, which means you couldn't consume the water. You had to boil it for basically anything. Like, so for my dogs, they were drinking bottled water. We were drinking bottled water. We were brushing our teeth with bottled water. And when there was a boil water warning for the, for the northern part of uh, Fort Worth and this area, it didn't make any sense because half the people didn't have power. So how are you supposed to boil water when you don't have power? So it was a very bizarre deal. And Texas, of course, is under their own power grid, which is um, an insane thing. So we're unregulated from federal power. And I don't know all the intricacies of that, but you know what that does is allows a lot of individual companies to have power. Um, and then one, like, we'll call them the overlord of the electric company, kind of controls everything on the back end. And so um, they didn't, you know, winterize the equipment correctly and things like that. So it was really unfortunate. And a, a lot, a lot of people um, went without. And so my heart goes out to those folks that don't have any power. On a more positive note, I did want to say thank you very much for the 100 subscribers. The next milestone is 250 subscribers, so do me a favor, guys. If you like the content, please subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button and click that bell to get notified. So a couple things that are upcoming. Um, I did a Power Commander in the MT-07. Uh, you know, I did the, I did the Yoshimura exhaust on this. So I felt like I needed to add a Power Commander 2 to help the air-fuel ratio in this bike. So just today, in fact, I put the tune on it. And it feels night and day different. So I'm really liking the way the tune feels on this bike. Very smooth on the power delivery. Much smoother than stock. And then even the engine braking feels a little bit better. I'm not even sure if the tune does anything with that, but certainly the engine braking feels a little bit easier as well. And the throttle's not nearly as twitchy as it was. Um, so the tune is working terrific on this Power Commander 5 that I have on here. Secondly, I did order some new stuff during the, we'll call it the ice apocalypse. And uh, we got some TST Industries front blinkers and integrated blinker tail lights and uh, a couple other things. We got some new mirrors on the way. So I'm excited to get some of those things installed here shortly. And we'll have some, uh, we'll have some videos coming up for those as well. But I haven't really put any miles on this bike since I got it. You know, like I said, uh, if you watch the video, I'll drop a link to that video right here. But 
my buddy James and I drove over four and a half hours one way to go pick up this bike. And uh, ever since then, basically it's been in the garage because, well, the weather's been crap. Also, there is a ton of gravel on the road. Um, and it looks like it's gonna be in the 70s this coming week. So I'm excited for that and to get some more uh, vlog videos for you guys actually out riding and stuff because I know that's what you want to see. And I do have a new camera set up on the windscreen on this bike here, so... Uh-oh, what do we got going on here? You guys all right? Yep, all right. Looks like that dude went down on that bike that sucks like i said there is a ton of gravel on the road and so uh you got to be very very careful i'm getting a little bit of ticking in the engine here and i am not sure exactly why i know i need to do an oil change on this i'm wondering if that's a little bit of an exhaust leak up there oh i have to tighten that up a little bit but i am absolutely loving this yoshimura sounds terrific and boy, do I need to clean this bike. It is still so dirty. Yeah, all, see all this gravel and shit all over the ground? That is not good on a bike. But there she is guys, the current status of the MT-07. I think she's looking good other than needing a severe bath, which I'll get to. I know I've said that in like two videos now. I'll get to, <laughs> I'll give this thing a bath. Also, I'll pop a picture right here. Um, the DRZ 400, we're getting her a little bit ready for some camping here soon, some moto camping videos. So that'll be really exciting. And uh, I know that, uh, most people who watch motorcycle videos love the camping stuff. So James and I are working on a camping video for you soon. I know you guys wanted an update video. The windscreen is actually doing really, really good. Uh, I like, it actually does a pretty good job deflecting the wind up over the helmet. And I have a visor on my helmet, so it does clip it a little bit, but not too bad. Um, I would say I do recommend this so far. Probably have about 100 miles on it, no issues whatsoever. No real buffeting. And so, so far so good. I would recommend this windscreen, Amazon special, 30 bucks. <laughs> nice, we're still getting some of those pops, which is awesome. What is that? Suzuki? Pretty ballsy with no helmet or gear. <laughs> Whatever, dude. You do you. Is that a boulevard? C90, maybe? Shit, I don't know. Whatever it is, has more CCs than this. this video do me a favor please hit that like button subscribe to the channel let's hit that 250 subscriber mark share the video and click that bell to get notified when new videos come out thank you guys so much for watching we will see you in the next video later